This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Erin from the Impatient Gardener here and today I want to talk to you about one of my favorite flowers that I grow in my garden and it's actually very easy to grow. It's Nicotiana. Now Nicotiana sounds a lot like nicotine and that's because this is flowering tobacco which is you know like the sibling of tobacco tobacco. So it's an annual. There are I believe there is uh, at least one variety that is perennial in like zone six and up but the ones I grow and the ones I'm referring to today are all the annual Nicotianas. Now there's a whole bunch of them and so they really range from shorter to enormous big tall plants. I mean like six, seven feet tall. They generally have a wonderful scent. That's really what they're known about, although not all varieties have that. So beware if that's why you're growing it. And they're just beautiful in the garden. I find them extremely easy to grow. Now the shorter varieties, you can get varieties that are about 10 inches tall. These are often the ones you'll find in a garden center, especially if you buy like a flat of um, little plants. A lot of times you're gonna be buying one of the short varieties. Most of the varieties that I grow are sort of the mid-height ones, um, which work really well, just fit into my garden. And I've used them for years in that way. So I'm gonna show you um, a few of the varieties that are out there as well as the ones that I'm going to be growing this year. Um, one of the varieties that I don't grow much, I've grown it before, but I don't often grow it, is actually um, Nicotiana sylvestris, which is the woodland tobacco. This is a monster. It gets about six feet tall, but it has these long, I mean very long, tubular white flowers that hang down and a wonderful scent in the evening. It has very big foliage, so it's a bold plant. Um, and it's sort of that woodland idea works well with it. I happen to grow a lot of um, hybrids, but also a lot of Nicotiana alata, which is known as jasmine tobacco. Um, the thing with these is that most of them have a great scent. And in fact, this alata type are the ones that you often grow for the great scent. Ironically, the ones that I really like from the alata um, types are ones that don't have great scent. Um, and I wish I could get that. I just happen to really like the color of those. Whichever ones you grow, uh, it's basically all the same for the most part, the same carrot. You generally want full sun, although you can push these certainly into part sun. And I would say in hotter areas, you would probably be well served to think about giving them a little protection in the afternoon from heat. And um, they can be easily grown from seed, which is how I grow mine. So I'm just going to quickly show you the varieties that I'm growing this year, um, which are a lot, a lot of them. Um, my favorite, and the one that I, I think I'll always grow, is this one. It's called um, Nicotiana alata, and this is lime green. It's a seed strain that has um, these beautiful chartreuse flowers. And I find that chartreuse works really well in the garden for transitioning. It works with everything and it also helps to create some cohesion in the garden. Along that same line is another one called Nicotiana langsdorfii. Um, this is kind of very small bell-shaped flowers. And what's fun is that since I've been growing both of these varieties, um, what happens when you save seed, like I have here, is sometimes you get kind of a weird little hybrid that has just sort of happened in your garden. So when you save seed from these, it's not necessarily going to be one of these. And actually last year when I grew some of my own seed that I had saved, it was clearly a combination of these two. And I really actually liked it the best. Now, the only way to make sure that I would get that variety again is to actually take root cuttings, pull up the plant at the end of the year, take root cuttings, keep those moist, and then grow those on as root cuttings. I've never done that, but if I wanted to make sure that I had that same plant, you essentially have to clone it. The other varieties I have is, uh, this is uh, Bella. Uh, this is Nicotiana alata um, uh, crossed with uh, Mutabilis. And I believe that Mutabilis means that those flower colors mutate. They sort of change from a dark pink to a light pink. I grew this last year in the big container by the front door. It was really quite pretty. I also have one that I'm going to try this year called Whisper Rose. This is another high, this is an F1 hybrid. And then I have two, oh, three others. And I also picked up this one. This is another hybrid. It's called Tinkerbell. 
To me, the flowers on this look a lot like the flowers on Langstorm Vi. This has sort of a um, kind of a dark red, almost burgundy kind of color to it, which I thought would be interesting. And then I have two shorter ones. These are just grow just 20 inches tall. The rest of these all are sort of in the, um, I would say the lime green gets to about three feet. The rest of them, like the Bella, that could be four feet. Uh, these two only get to 20 inches and this is Perfume um, Bright Rose and Perfume Deep Purple. Those are new for me this year. So those are the varieties I'm growing, but like I said, uh, regardless of which one you're growing, the planting and growing of them is pretty much all the same. So I'm gonna just show you how I plant some of these up. Now, you want to, if you're starting this from seed, you're looking at about eight weeks um, before your last frost date, maybe, maybe 10, somewhere in there. Um, I generally do eight weeks before my last frost date on these. And there's really nothing special about planting these. They're very easy. There's just a couple little tricks to know. So one of the things you'll notice pretty quickly as soon as you get some Nicotiana is that the seeds are microscopic. Okay, I'm exaggerating. They're not microscopic. The seeds are the smallest seeds of anything I grow. In fact, the only seed that, I'm, that I've personally seen that is smaller than Nicotiana is um, begonia. So it's almost dust-like, sm much smaller than a poppy seed, if you can believe that. Now, if you want to avoid that, one of the things you can do is look for pelleted seed. Okay, so hopefully here you can see the difference between the pelleted seed and the regular seed. I mean, that is, I don't know how many seeds that is, 50 maybe. And then you can see the pelleted seed. The pelleted seed is about the size of a poppy seed, so still very small, but not nearly like those other ones. So with a pelleted seed, it's much easier to just sow one or two per cell. Obviously with these other ones, we have to be a little bit more careful. One of the ways you can sow very tiny seeds more thinly is to mix it with sand. Frankly, I don't ever bother with that. So you're just going to try to sprinkle these. I mean, because it's very hard to see where they're going. I mean, I would say aim for maybe five or 10 per cell. And you're just going to lightly sprinkle them on there. There's no way to see them on the soil unless you're going to get out like a microscope or a magnifying glass. So you just have to kind of wing this a little bit. I'm sowing these in a seed starting mix. Um, you can just in cells. You can also sow this on soil blocks, whatever you like. Now the main thing to know about growing a cochian from seed is that it needs light to germinate. So I still top all of my seedlings with vermiculite, no matter what seedling we're talking about. But I sow, I will uh, put it on there more thinly on something that, that needs light to germinate. So I'm just putting some fine vermiculite on top. That vermiculite helps keep moisture in that top layer. It also keeps it from developing a crust, if you've ever had that happen, and from uh, growing some LJ, although that's usually related to uh, overly wet soil. Okay, so that's all there is to sowing these seeds. Like I said, it's really easy. Um, now, like I said, they need light. So what you want to do is get these, I put them on a heat mat. Obviously you need a little bottom heat helps, but you do want these to be exposed to light. Now the thing about Nicotiana is that it tends to have leaves that just kind of lay flat against the soil, which makes it uh, difficult to kind of get in there. They don't stick up over the soil. So when it comes to thinning, these in particular, I find it easier to just go in there with like a little needle nose, um, a little needle nose printer or something or a scissors because it's very hard to sort of get under there and pry them up. If you have sewn these too thickly, you will end up with a, a mass of seedlings and it's very, very hard to thin those. It happens to me a lot, um, but it's, it's much easier if you have sewn thinly from the beginning. Um, keep them under your lights, your grow lights for a while, and then you can move them outside once uh, once the garden has warmed up and all the um, chance of frost has passed. Now these will um, self-sow a bit around your garden. The problem with the self-sowing is that they take a while to get going, so you're probably not going to see flowers from those until maybe August or so. So I do have self-sowers and I just leave them where I want them and take them up, but those are the ones that bloom later. Once you get them in your garden, sort of an even moisture thing, they're not gonna be super fussy about moisture, things like that. 
Uh, and then you do want to deadhead these. And actually, you can actually give these a pretty hard cut back and they will reflower for you if the whole plant starts looking a little bit shabby. Now, last year I grew the Bella variety in the big container um, out front and that really wanted consistent moisture. I had no problem. I've never grown them in a container before. I've always grown them in the ground and I don't give them any special attention. In fact, I don't even, after I've planted them and watered them, maybe a little bit, that's it. They just do their own thing after that. Very, very easy plant. A couple of things to know about Nicotiana. One, it can harbor tab um, tobacco mosaic virus. So you should not, which can affect anything in the nightshade family. So that's tomatoes, peppers, eggplant. So you don't want to plant it near your tomatoes, your peppers, or your eggplant. I have actually done that. I often grow tomatoes right on my patio, which I have Nicotiana everywhere. And I've never seen any problem but it is advised that you keep those things separate um, because once tobacco and mosaic virus crosses over to your tomatoes, say, uh, it can wipe out tomatoes pretty quickly. Um, by the way, uh, smokers can pass that along too if they have tobacco um, on their hands and same with tools. So you just wanna be a little careful about that. I've not found them to be prone to pests too much except last year, um, when I grew them in the container, I had a massive aphid infestation towards the end of the year. And I have now heard that a lot of people actually grow Nicotiana as an aphid trap crop. I have never had aphids that I've noticed on any of my other plants. I would assume that they hit that container because they were stressed. I grew that same Nicotiana elsewhere in the ground, no aphid problems whatsoever. So I think they were stressed from being in that container. Um, and that's why the aphids went for that, but it, it was dramatic. It was well beyond the stage where you were going to do anything to fix it. So the other note about growing is that Nicotiana will appreciate some fertilizer. Um, I am, have admitted my mistakes last year with not fertilizing my seedlings enough. And you can tell pretty quickly, the leaves just kind of start losing their color. They don't look great. So you should, you should fertilize your seedlings with this. Um, use a weak liquid. I just use fish fertilizer to, to fertilize my seedlings generally. So use um, a like half or quarter measure of um, dilution of like a fish fertilizer to fertilize those. And they'll appreciate it once they're in the ground too, although I don't, I don't go out of my way to fertilize mine at all, with the exception of if I do like a big cutback or something, I'll hit them with some fertilizer then, but that's it. So that's it about growing uh, Nicotiana. It's really a very easy plant and it's one of the plants that I love to grow from seed because it also fills in in the garden very nicely. So if you have a hole in your garden, it's a really inexpensive way to get some color in your garden. Oh, and by the way, the hummingbirds absolutely love it. So it's a great way to invite some hummingbirds into your garden as well. All right, so I hope you found that helpful and I hope you give Nicotiana a try this year. Um, I am going to continue doing a couple more growing guides for specific kinds of plants. So if there's something you're really particularly interested in seeing, leave a note in the comments and uh, we'll see if we can make a video on that. So big thanks to our sponsor for this video and that's Skillshare. Skillshare is this really cool online learning community which is just full of thousands of classes for things that you either want to learn or maybe things you want to improve on or do better from the really kind of practical things to the things that are just for fun and you can really have fun doing some of these things. So one of the things that I've been trying to get better about is time management. I always feel like I'm behind the eight ball on everything. So I found this course called Productivity with a Purpose and he's just fabulous. He walks you through all the ways to make the best use of your time so that you can be productive and not feel like I feel sometimes, which is like, there is so much left to do. The other great thing about Skillshare is that it's really a community. There are other people you can interact with um, for encouragement or inspiration. And it kind of fills that, that thing that a lot of us are missing these days. So head on over to Skillshare and check out the courses they offer. And if you want to check some of them out, the first 1000 people who use the link in the description are going to get a free trial to a Skillshare premium membership. And so you can take some courses and then after that, it's only about $10 a month to continue. And I figure $10 a month is about the cost of two Nicotiana plants that you would buy at the nursery. 
and I bet you I spent about $12 on all these seeds. So how's that for justification for you? All right, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks again, Skillshare. We'll see you soon.